We're going to learn how to make some art that is like a city skyline, kind of like you see here in these samples. We are going to stick to something a little more simple, like maybe something like this for now. And the reason why we're doing that is we, there's a few things. I'm going to be able to teach you how to use grids and guides, which are on the certification exam. And I'm going to, if you're watching this for the illustrator video, I'm going to show you how to use artboards, which is another thing that's in the certification exam. And the other reason why we're doing it is our, one of our uh, projects that we do at the end of the year is to make a Roku style screensaver where we combine everybody's art together to make this kind of scrolling animation. So this is one that we did last year with our students. So everybody's going to contribute a bunch of buildings and we're going to put them all together and make some type of animation like this. All right, so the first part of this video, we're going to um, go over how to make like these patterns here. These are going to be used uh, for the windows in your skyscrapers. So I'm going to show you how to make some patterns and then you'll be able to copy them and paste them and scale them and put them on different buildings. So let me show you how to get started with this. So let's go to File, New, and make a new document. You're going to make it a uh, letter size 11 inches by 8.5 inches on the height, and the orientation is landscape. I'm having you guys do all most of your assignments in this size so that we can print them out and use them like in the classroom or in for art shows. So leave all this as default 0. The color mode can be RGB, raster effects 300, and say create. All right, and then let's always go and let's reset the workspace to essentials so that we all have the same looking window here. And what I'm going to show you first is how to use grids. And this is something that's on the certification exam. So that's one of the purposes of this assignment. So to turn on some grids, what you need to do is go to preferences. On your PCs, the preferences can be found at the bottom of the edit menu. I'm on a Mac so it's somewhere else so on your pc go to edit and go all the way down to the bottom or you can press Control k that will open preferences and on my mac it's over here under this menu and i want to open up uh, guides and grid so you're going to get this window here it's going to ask you what color that you want your lines and everything i'm going to leave that as a default and actually you can leave all this as default. If it looks the same as mine, it should be one inch grid line and then subdivisions are eight. All right, so have yours match this. And by the way, if you're not in inches, if you made a mistake, you can always go back up here to units and make sure that your units are in general. All right, let's say okay. And if you don't see a grid pop up on your screen, you just go up to view and go down here where it says show grid. So we're going to check that and there we have our grid. And then we're going to go to view one more time while we're here and say snap to grid. That way when we're drawing something it will you know stay in the confines of the grid and not you know go outside of it and make different shapes. So we want to have both of those selected. Alright so let's just start making some squares. Go over here and get your rectangular tool and let's zoom in and the first pattern we're going to make is just some basic square windows. So let's just go over here and draw a box that fits in that first little grid. And let's go over here and let's just color it so we can see it. So I'm going to double click on that. You can pick any color you want. I'm just going to use magenta for mine. And then make sure you have stroke none. So I'm going to go ahead and dock this color over here to the side and the color guide. I'm going to dock that over here too. So to copy your squares, let's zoom in even more. All right, let's get our selection tool. Now this is already selected. If I hold the Alt key, you see I get a double arrow. That means I can just click on my object and drag a copy over. So I'm going to do that. If you want to hold the Shift key, it will keep it perfectly straight. However, since we have it on Snap to Grid, it easily goes into the space and doesn't like go in the middle. So we got that one copied there. 
now it gets easy. You're going to duplicate that same command over again. So just do control D and that will duplicate the same thing. Let's zoom out a little bit now. So I have control D and just do about that many. So I have one, two, three inches of these little squares. Now I'm going to get my selection tool and drag over all of those and get them all selected. And I'm going to do control G. So now they're a group. So when I click on it, I get all of them. Then I'm going to hold the alt key again and drag down and get another copy of them. And then once again, control D. Let me do control minus to zoom out a little bit and the space bar to move my window around and just keep doing control D all the way down the page like that. Doesn't really have to be all the way, but you know, somewhere around there. All right, so now we have some windows that we can use for one of our buildings. Let's do another window pattern over here. So I'm gonna get my rectangle tool again, and I'm gonna come over here, and let's do a window pattern that is like three, three squares. Whoops. So I have one, two, three squares on this window pattern, and I'm gonna do the Alt key, and move over a copy. And this time I'm gonna leave two spaces in between. So I have a three block square with a two block space. And then if I do control D, it will just continue to duplicate that same command. All right, and I can do it about that big. And then I'm gonna hold, um, select all these and do control G to group it. And once again, alt key to make a copy. And I'll slide another copy down maybe something like that. So I have two spaces in between that group and then do control D again, all the way down. Zoom out so you can see. All right, so now we have two different window patterns that we can use when we're making our buildings. Now what I want you to do now is learn how to use artboards. So to make another artboard, an artboard is basically this, this canvas area that we have, but I want another one because I'm going to make a bunch of patterns. So let's go to window and choose artboards. All right, so when we click on that, we see this artboard that we have already, and I want to make a new one. So I can go over here and click the plus, and that gave me a new artboard. So I can start drawing more window patterns um, on this artboard. So something they ask you to do on the test is to make a new artboard and they want you to arrange it vertically. And so the default here is that's going horizontal. But if you go over here and click, you can rearrange the artboards and you can have it go right to left by column. We want to do arrange by column over here. So we're going to click on that. And oh, by the way, make sure you have move artwork with artboard when you're doing this. So we're going to click on this and say okay, and now you see it puts the new artboard underneath that. All right, so there's two questions from the certification exam already covered in this assignment. All right, let's continue on and make some new window patterns on our second artboard. So I'm gonna zoom in here, and this time I'm going to draw some just horizontal full lines like this. So I'm gonna have it one square, thick by three inches, three of the big blocks wide. And then I'm gonna hold my Alt key and drag a copy just below that. Let's make it two squares in between the first one and then do Control D all the way down. And then let's do another type of building where maybe we have vertical windows in it. So let's do it one square like this and hold the Alt key and drag over a copy, leaving two squares in between it and do Control D like this. So remember when you're using these, like if you go and select all of them and do Control G, let's go back and do that. Let's select all of our things and do Control G to group them together. 
So now when we click on them, they are their own group. So it'll be easy for you to copy and paste them into your cityscape once you get going with it. All right, let's make one more page of window patterns. So I'm going to click on a new artboard. And again, I want to arrange that differently. So I'm going to go over here and make sure that it's arranged in a column. All right, so on the next artboard, we're going to make some win more window patterns. But this time, we're going to change the grid up and make it a little smaller grid. So let's go back in your preferences. So remember, on your PC, it's at the bottom of Edit Menu. On a Mac, it's over here. But you can press Control k to get your preferences. We're going to go back to our Guides and Grid. And this time where it says subdivisions, we're going to double that and make it 16. So now we're going to zoom in a lot more and we're going to be able to draw some smaller, smaller patterns. So on this pattern, let's go over here and make it three squares. So you have it one, two, three squares wide by one square that way. And we're going to hold the Alt key to drag a copy and let's leave let's actually go below below here and make it like this so we have this double dash line and then we're going to hold the alt key and make a copy and space it out like about like that and so i have one two three and we're going to do duplicate and then let's grab all these and we can do group control G and then let's do the alt key again and then let's space them out like this. So we have three squares in between. We have three squares in between the next row. I'm going to zoom out so I can see this and do control D all the way down. Zoom out a little bit more. Control minus. All right, and then I'm going to select all those and do control G so that they're all a group. And let's make another pattern. Let's zoom in here. And let's do some kind of long vertical windows. So I have one, two, three, four. I have four squares by one square. And I'm going to hold the, select that and then hold the Alt key. Whoops, try that again. Hold the Alt key and pull out another copy. And this time we'll leave them one space apart like that. And let's select both of those and hold the Alt key and just make another copy with two spaces in between. And then do Control D. So we have about that many. Doesn't have to be exactly, this is just patterns that you'll be able to edit later. So I'm going to select that whole row there and group it. And then I'm going to hold the Alt key and Shift key to drag down another copy. So let's leave three spaces in between those windows and do Control D. All right, so now we have a bunch of different window patterns because it makes your skyline look a lot more interesting if all the windows are not the same pattern. So that's probably good enough. Let me look at my one that I did originally to see if there was anything else. Oh, okay, so let's make maybe some that have a little bit different spacing because if you're doing them really small, like let's say you picked this one and you have a small building that's in the background like this, you might not be able to have enough space so it looks a little bit better to space them out sometimes so that when you're drawing a small building you have some space in between them. So let's do one like that over here. So let's take our, let's make a copy of that and pull it up here. So I'm going to hold the Alt key. Let's bring this one up. And I'm going to get my selection tool. And I'm going to click in the middle and click on each, every other one with the direct selection tool, this second tool. See, I have these all grouped, so I'm going to use that tool. Press delete twice. Click on it. Press delete twice. Click on this. Press it twice. So now we can use some of these spaced out ones that will look good on a small building. So notice how if I go to reduce the size of that, 
maybe you want some of them that have a smaller pattern where it's more spaced out. So that's how you can make, make some extra ones that are a little bit varied like that. All right, let's go ahead and save this too. Make sure you do a save. And I'm just gonna call this Project Skyline. It'll save it as an Illustrator file. Let's make a new artboard for that. So I'm gonna click the plus and have another artboard. And I'm going to arrange it so that it's in these vertical columns instead. And let me go ahead and zoom in, control plus. And let's go to this artboard here. So I wanna get rid of this grid now. It's distracting at this point. I don't need it for the next part of the assignment. So you can go up to view and let's go to hide grid or you can press control. Um, apostrophe. All right, and let's get the color that we're going to use. So we don't want any stroke on this, and the fill color can just be black for this. So it's going to be more like a silhouette for now. And get your rectangle tool and just start drawing some silhouettes of buildings. So basically, there's just different shaped rectangles. You're going to have some really tall, skinny ones. Maybe you'll have some shorter ones like this. Just all different shapes and widths. It's okay to have some of them touching too, like they're right next to each other. You can also have like the top of the building having some extra sections on it, like that. Maybe you want an antenna or something on the very top of it. So you can make a skinny rectangle. You can use the arrow keys on your keyboard to move things around. So let's say like this one right here, how these things are kind of off. They're not really centered. So what you can do is select all of them by dragging a box selection box around all of it and go over here to properties and pathfind or go to align and choose this one, horizontal align center. And that bumps everything so that it's centered. And then you can just group this building. So while you have all that selected, you can do control G. So that way, if you're moving this building around, it's all one, one group. All right, so let's keep drawing some more, more of these buildings. Maybe you want to put like a triangle on the top of one of them so you can get your pen tool right here. And maybe you can click on the point at the edge there and here, there, and then close that up. So, all right, so that's a pretty good start there. We can um, start building some of our city with this much. And I'm just going to grab all these and scoot it over a little bit. And let me show you how to start putting some windows on there. So what you can do is let's go, let's zoom out, control minus, and pick some of these different patterns to put on here. So I think I'm gonna take this pattern right here and I'm just gonna copy it, control C, control V, and paste it. And I think I'll put it on this building right here. So I can just take the bottom corner of it and drag it so that it fits. If you want it to be like even smaller, you know, you can do something like this. And let's pull that out a little bit. And once again, I'm going to select both and then I'm going to do that vertical align thing over here or horizontal align like that. And I want to make another copy of that. So I'm going to select this and hold the alt key again. And I'm going to hold the shift key to keep it perfectly straight and make another copy of it. I need to space it a little bit more. So you might want to zoom in so that you can space it. All right, now, so right now it's not letting me put it exactly where I want because it still has that snap to grid thing. So I'm going to go over here to view and I'm going to uncheck this snap to grid. Now I can like precisely move things without it snapping. I don't really need that snap to grid anymore. All right, and maybe if I want this to go, let me group this now or click on both of those window things and do control G. And then I can also just make it go all the way to the bottom just by dragging that bottom like that. All right, let's put another window pattern in. Maybe I'll take this one now, control C, control V, make a copy of it. 
And I will paste these on this building here. And let's pick another pattern. Maybe I'll get this one right here. Control C, let me move to my buildings and do Control V. And I think I'll put that one on these. So you can just uh, grab the corner of it there and make it stretch it out to fit like that. And then if I want to continue those building those windows over here, I could hold that. Hold the Alt key and make a copy on these here. And let's say I don't want all those. You can just get the direct selection tool right here, which is the second selection tool, and just drag around those ones that you want to delete. Press delete twice. Oops, I didn't mean to grab that point. Get these and press delete twice. And let's see, I want to make this rectangle right here, let me select that, a little bit wider so that it, like those windows aren't getting cut off right, right there. All right, that looks pretty good. Now let me go grab another window pattern. Let's do, I think I'll take this vertical one here, copy, paste, bring it down here and put it on this building. Grab that corner, stretch it out. Maybe get some different type of windows for up there. So let's go ahead and just grab maybe these. Control C. Let's go to that top part. Control V and let's make it smaller. And I can hold the Alt key and make another copy of that. And I'm going to center it. And I don't want to make it smaller. I want to leave it the same size as these. But since I have that extra bit there, I can just get my direct selection tool and drag around those outer ones and press delete twice on my keyboard. All right, so let's go ahead and get maybe, Let's use, whoops, let's use this pattern here. So I didn't group those yet when I clicked on that, so I'm going to drag a box around that and do Control G to group that. Control C to copy. Control V to paste. I'm going to put that in this building. And let's use this one here. Control C, Control V. Let's see, I don't really want all those other ones over here, so I'm going to move this off of the building so that I don't accidentally select other stuff. And I'm going to get my direct selection tool and just drag around. And so I'm getting maybe four, four rows of those. Let's try putting that in here. Once again, I want to center it, so I'm going to click on both of those and go to Align and choose this right here, Horizontal Align, and that bumps it so it's centered. All right, and one more. I think I'll use that first one again. This one, Control-C and Control-V. I probably won't use this whole pattern in here because then it gets too small. So let's see, I have one, two, or one, two, three, four, five. So I'm going to get rid of the last five. So I'm going to pull it off the window, get my direct selection tool, and just delete the last five of those, and maybe the last th three on the bottom. And that will fit this a little bit better. Maybe shrink it up a little bit. All right, so now we have a skyline. It doesn't look that great yet, but I'll show you how to keep editing this and fill it out to make it look better.
All right, so the next thing you can do after you have your first page of buildings done is like, for instance, on mine, I'm just going to go clean up a few things like to make this have more space like that one does. You can just go in and edit any of your rectangles just by clicking on them and pulling in or out of areas that you want to change. And like, for instance, on this building, I think I want to get rid of this row of buildings. So you can always get your direct selection tool and click on whatever you want to delete. Click it once and then delete twice on your keyboard. And after you um, get it all cleaned up, I want to show you one other similar thing to do to make it look a little bit more realistic is to turn off some of the windows. So realistically, if you saw the skyline, all the windows are never on. Some of them are dark. So what you can do is while you have this direct selection tool selected, just go and click on some of the windows and then click delete or backspace twice on your keyboard to turn some of the lights off because not all of them would be on. All right, so I'm going to do some of that off camera because it'd be too boring for you to watch, but you can see it looks a little more realistic if you do that. Um, on these buildings here where we have just these vertical things, you could just draw a square on top of it or rectangle. So you could get your shape, your rectangle shape there and just fill that with black color, black, and just kind of patch in on top of some of the vertical lines. So you can hold the Alt key and just keep dragging different copies around. You don't want to like grab um, one that's already selected because it'll just make it change the size, you know, so if I tried to grab that one while it's selected, it won't work. So it's better to just grab one that's already deselected and that way you can hold the Alt key and make copies of it. So that's why I'm reaching over to some of the other ones to um, drag copies of them out. So once again, I'll just do that off camera so you don't have to watch me, but that gives it a little more realistic look when some of them are turned off. All right, so once you do that and you have, you know, this this page done here, what you're going to do is create another artboard. So create new one for artboard 5. Once again, we're going to click over here and arrange it so it's vertical and say okay. And you're going to do the same thing below here. So I want you to have two of these pages that have nice buildings in them with windows. So I'm going to do that part off camera and I'll show you what to do next. I drew another page of buildings here on my artboard number five and I went on artboard number four and I just deleted some random windows so that they look like some of them are off. It's just a little bit more realistic looking if you turn some of the windows off and then like on these ones where I had vertical and horizontal bars all I did was just make a bunch of little squares and held the alt key to copy them on different areas of the page to cover up some of the windows randomly all right so when you're done with that oh and one other thing you can also have you know take a ellipse tool over here and draw some type of an ellipse and make that for the top of your roof too on some of the buildings. So we have a little bit of varied things. We have some triangles, some ovals, some blocks that go up, put some antennas on there. So try to draw at least one, two, three, four, five, six, draw at least six buildings on a page. If you want to do a couple more, you can, like on this page I had more. And what you'll do next is after you have, you know, two pages of buildings and you have all your window patterns and you have some of them turned off, you're going to group all of them to each building to have a group. So I'm going to get my top selection tool and just drag around so that I have that whole building selected and then do control G to group. Same with over here, just drag a box that goes on top of just that building and do control G. Same with all of these. I'm going to select them all. Make sure you get all the windows and everything that you drew for that building. I'm going to group these together as one. Control G. 
So that way, when if you want to copy and paste some of these buildings when you're making your skyline, you already have them all grouped, and it just makes it a lot easier to do that. All right, so now I have all my buildings grouped. So whenever I want to click on a building, oops, I don't see I left some of my window windows out there. So I'm gonna reselect that. Do Control G. All right, now I have the whole building selected. So if that happens, if you go and move your building and you realize you forgot something, it's okay. Just go back and select it again and press Control G. Okay, so I have two pages now of these buildings. You're going to make another artboard next. So let's go on Artboard 5 and choose Plus. And then let's make it a vertical layout. So we have that. And what you are going to do next is draw a or copy all these buildings down here at the bottom. So you're going to grab your selection tool and do control C, control V. So you have all these buildings. And then you're going to shrink them up to be about half the page. If you hold your shift key, things will stay proportional. If you want to stretch things to make them taller, you cannot hold the shift key. It's totally up to you how you want to do that. And just have it fill about half the page. Then we're going to go over here to this page and select all those. Control C, Control V, or yeah, Control V to copy it. And then we're going to fit these right next to those buildings. And again, just click in the corner and drag them to fit. If you want to keep them proportional, you can do that. I'm going to keep mine kind of tall, so I'm going to go ahead and let them be a little bit squished like that. All right, so you can see how quickly you can start building a skyline. Um, you could even continue doing this, like make it even more buildings by maybe squishing them together a little bit more and then just copying individual ones like let's say I want to have that one I can hold the alt key and pull it out and copy it you can change the scale on some of them so they don't all look like you've copied and pasted them you can just drag it and hold it out like this so you can make a different shape building like this one to me looks a little bit too tall and skinny so I'm gonna pull that one out and go like this so you can see how quickly you can build a skyline there. So once you get roughly that amount of buildings, I think that's good enough. So in the end, what we're going to do is combine everyone's buildings together and have one really long thing. For example, just to show you quickly what it might look like, let's say I take one person's city and we put it next to another person's. You can see how it's going to grow and grow and grow, and we're going to have the scrolling um, animation that goes by and so quickly you see you have this awesome long skyline so but for now though we're just going to keep it you know about this size is fine I mean if you're if you're motivated and you want to keep making making your skyline a little bit bigger you can reduce these and keep making making more but that's how you do that so let's leave that like it is for now and put this along the very bottom of the page it's okay if they're going past the page down here as long as you don't have any white space underneath it I am fine with that I'm actually going to stretch these out so that it fits across the page And if there's any buildings you don't like, you can go ahead and edit them. Like, I think this one right here is too skinny. I'm just going to delete that one, and I'm going to actually make this building bigger. So you can see how it's easy to edit this. All right, so the next step you're going to do is, so you have your skyline right there. Let's make a background for it. So let's go over here to Layers. So we have everything in Layer 1 right now. We want to make a new layer, so let's click the plus down here at the bottom and make a new layer and we're going to drag it behind here and we're going to make a gradient sky. So get your rectangle tool and draw a rectangle that fits the whole whole background like this. And then you're going to choose this middle tool which is gradient. I already made mine pink and black but I'll show you how to edit it. So we have this pink and black background. I'll show you how it would look when you first 
do it, it will look more like, so when you first choose the gradient, it's going to come out with this default looking gradient that's black and white. And by the way, if you don't have the gradient window open, it should open if you click on this tool right here, gradient, you'll get this line here where you can edit it, or you can go to window and open up gradient. And what you want to do is we want to rotate this 90 degrees because we want the black to be on the top and then we want it to fade to another color on the bottom. So I'm going to double click that. This is called a color stop. I'm going to click that and I'm going to choose the same magenta that I used in my windows. And I'm going to dock this gradient window over here so I can use it again. So when it turns blue, you know you've docked it. All right, so then we have the sky and we have our skyline. And then the last thing I'm going to show you how to do, or the next thing I'm going to show you how to do, is how to make even more buildings that are further in the background, buildings that you just don't really see that well that are pretty hazy. So let's lock our sky background here and lock our buildings that we have up here. You can name these if you want. And let's make another layer. And we're gonna just call this faded buildings. And we're gonna put it in between these two. So it's gonna be in between your first buildings and your sky. Alright, so I want to show you how to make some of these little background buildings that we have that are faded and behind the other buildings. So I'm going to delete the things that I made there. And what you're going to do is you're going to get the pen tool and start off on the side of your document. And you're going to keep the shift key held the whole time. And that will keep all of your, all of your lines perfectly straight. So you're just going to kind of rough in some building shapes just like you did when you made all the individual buildings, but this is a lot quicker. And you're gonna have less detail on these, so it doesn't really, really matter. When you get to the end of the page, just click right on the edge of your page and then go all the way down to the bottom. Keep your shift key held the whole time. Click there. And then when you get to this right here, you need to close the path. So you can see it gets a little circle next to the pen. That's where you can click your last point. And then what you can do as far as filling these things, so they're black right now, but it kind of looks cool if you go to transparency, which is under window, you can find the transparency panel and try some of these other blending modes like I think overlay looks pretty good and then it kind of just gives you a little shadow of some more buildings that are like off in the distance behind these and you can even do that twice if you want like if you wanted to make another copy of them let's just say I copy and paste this one and maybe I flip it around the other way and make it smaller and copy it again, and reduce it down, and then you can have even more buildings. So after you have these new shapes drawn for the buildings that are in the background, hold your shift key and click on all of them. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna shrink them down because they really shouldn't be any taller than the foreground buildings, because the, bu the buildings in the front should be should be the tallest. So make it, you know, similar height, but a little bit shorter. And if you want, you can pull this up so you can see, see the high and low parts there. All right, so it should look something like that. Then we're going to go back into our layers here, and we're going to unlock the sky layer and the buildings layer. Well, actually unlock the buildings layer and not the sky. So have buildings and faded buildings and you're going to get your selection tool and drag a box out here so that you have all of them selected and then hold the shift key and move it up a little bit so that you have them higher up off the ground and then you're going to go on the buildings layer and draw a black well actually you're going to draw a box that's the same color as your windows so make this thin rectangle that's about the same 
um, width as mine, and we're going to use the eyedropper to have it be the same color that you chose for your windows. Then we're going to go and unlock the sky, and we're going to draw another rectangle. And this time you're going to make it black, and you're going to put it all the way up to the edge, you know, a little bit into your buildings, kind of where the edge of those um, other shapes start. And you're going to click on, whoops, not your um, eyedropper. You're going to click on this and choose black. So you want your rectangle to be black like that. And don't worry about things going off the edge here because when you export it, it will trim it, trim it off. I'm going to go back on my buildings layer and I'm going to pull this up so that it covers the very edge of my buildings. All right, now I can go back in and I'm going to lock all my building layers and leave the sky open. And I'm just going to show you how to maybe make some simple clouds. So let's get our pencil tool. So we're on our sky layer. You're going to click on your pencil tool. You can press N on your keyboard. It's behind the paintbrush. Click on the pencil tool and draw like just some rough cloud shapes. Just remember that clouds are kind of flat on the bottom. So come back up and it's very important when you get close to the edge that you see how it got a circle right there. If you don't close that path, you're going to have problems. So wait till your pencil gives you a circle. Then you can let go when you see you have all these points that it's selected. Now, right now it's filled with nothing. I'm going to go ahead and fill it with magenta, the same color that I've used here before. I'm going to change something on that later. But for now, let's go ahead and make your clouds the same color that you made your your windows. And once again, before I let go of the pencil, I'm waiting for that circle to show up right next to my pencil, and I know it's closed. And once again, I'm going to make it magenta. So just make a few clouds here and there. It doesn't have to be anything in particular. You can always edit them or delete them if you don't like them. Wait for it to close and press the color. Maybe I'll just do one more cloud here. Wait for me to get that circle next to the pencil and then press my color. All right, that should be enough. And I'm going to click on all of them by holding the shift key and clicking on all my clouds. And then I'm going to go over here to transparency. Remember, you can find that under window. Check transparency and try some maybe different blending modes. So maybe overlay, that looks pretty good. And maybe I'll lower the opacity a little bit so that they're kind of faint because it's dark. So you can experiment with that and you can always move them around and to be a better order. And then let's draw a moon right here. So let's get our ellipse tool and hold the shift key to make a perfect circle. So you can have a moon like that. You can do the same thing as far as putting it on overlay if you want. I'm going to leave the opacity high on that one. So you can leave a circular moon or if you want a crescent moon, I can show you real quick how to make a crescent moon. You would click on your circle and then hold down the alt key to make a copy of it so that it was right next to it. So you have these two copies and then hold the shift key to get both of them. Then you're going to go over here to Shape Builder Tool. You can press Shift M on your keyboard to access it. And then if you hover it over the shape while holding the Alt key, see how I got it? It's a plus right now, and then I get a minus. It will delete anything that you have selected there. So I'm going to click that to delete it, and I want to click that. And then I have like this crescent moon shape like that. I'm actually going to undo it though because I want mine to just have a circle. I like it like that. All right, and then the um, one other thing I can show you how to do add something else to this to give it a little bit of interest is to kind of make a spotlight. So let's get our pen tool and maybe go over here behind one of these buildings. And you can just draw with the pen tool, make kind of like a skinny triangle. And let's make this one a blend so that let's click on the very middle, the gradient, and it should give you the default gradient that you had before. And then we're going to go over here on the transparency panel 
and just put lighten. We only want to show the light colors, none of the dark colors. So you can make a couple spotlights. You can always move them around if you don't like where you put it. Maybe I'll move some of these clouds. I don't know. I kind of like where the clouds were. I'll leave those like they are. Um, I think I'm going to lower the opacity, though, of this spotlight. So it's just a little more subtle. I think something like that looks good. You can even copy and paste it. And then go over here to one side and flip it so you can have another one going the other direction. And then let's show you, let me show you how to maybe make some quick stars. So let's click on our color and just pick white and get our regular paintbrush tool and just click some dots. If you hold, if you press the bracket keys on your keyboard, go click like the, the left bracket key a couple times, you can make even smaller dots. So that way you can have some really small stars mixed in with some big ones. You don't want them all to be the same, same size. All right, so I think that's enough for this drawing. If you want to add more stuff, you can, but I think I gave you enough tricks to make a nice um, cityscape and then what we'll be doing is everyone will email these to me and at the you know later in the year we're going to combine all of them together and make like the scrolling city. David, I want to show you how you could experiment with the color in case you weren't really happy with the colors. You're not locked into that so just make sure that you have your file saved so that if you don't like what you've done you can undo it. So let's start off by unlocking all these layers here and let's try changing the sky first. So if we click on the sky, we see that the gradient that we made up here. So if you wanted to change colors, you can always uh, double click on this and experiment with different colors. Get like a totally different look. So let's say we wanted to choose something like that. You can also change your gradient so that it is a little darker by doing that, or it's brighter by doing that. Let's go ahead and maybe have it something like this. So you can get a lot of different, different looks by changing the gradient. But if you do decide to change the gradient, I would recommend going and picking different colors, obviously, for the rest of the thing. So. If you want to change all the window colorings to match, you would select something like this pink bar that you have here, and then go to Select, Same, Fill Color. Then everything that's that pink color, you can go in and switch it to match the new, the new look that you're trying out, the new color. And then you'd have to do the same thing with these. I will click on this, and I will use the eye drop. Actually, all uh, yeah. Click on those and then I drop it on the, the sky because it's the same gradient, but then you'll have to go back to transparency again and just put lighten and lower the transparency and change all of these things to be the other color that you chose. So yeah, I just wanted you to know you don't have to feel locked into the color if you want to experiment and try different colors you can. So when you're done, I want you to just export the final thing. You don't need to export all the other things. So go where you're going to do artboard six is what you're going to export. So first of all, you're going to save it to make sure you have your illustrator file. Then you're going to go to export, export as, you're going to choose JPEG. You're going to use artboards, but you're going to give me a range. So you're just going to do number six. Okay, so you don't need to get a JPEG of all that stuff, just your final city. So range is six, say export, and you can put it on medium quality. Make sure the screen resolution is 72 because this is just for the website for now. And say, okay. So one, one thing I did forget to tell you guys, type your name. Make sure you always type your name on all of your assignments. That way if I want to print them out and hang them up or use them in an art show, 
I know whose is whose.